All right, so if you've been watching recently, we've been talking through some of the roles of narcissistic families and how that kind of breaks down. And we've been talking the past two days just about how it looks in the family system with different roles that people play. And so you've got the, the scapegoat, like the person that the narcissist or the, the narcissistic parents are, are using to put all the blame on, to shame, to devalue, to put down. And you've got oftentimes flying monkeys, so different siblings or different relatives that are there to be able to abuse by proxy that are accepting the other narcissistic alternate reality and saying like, hey, I'm going to continue to believe that and attack this person at the same time. Then we talked about earlier this morning about the golden child. Uh, dropped, I think, at like 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. We talked about the golden child and how the golden child is put up as being able to do no wrong whatsoever. Oftentimes this person is idealized and the narcissist is trying to live vicariously through them saying, oh, this is who I am or this is defining my worth. The last one I want to talk to you about today out of the, the four main one that we're talking through is the hero slash caretaker. And this one's a little bit interesting. And for me, a lot of times I haven't seen it as much inside the narcissistic family until the person actually gets out. And as far as like leaves the family and sometimes they're down the road. I was interacting with someone the other day on a one-on-one -on -one where, where they're down the road, they're married, they have their life. And, and the wife is trying to get the husband to understand like, Hey, no, you were brought up in a narcissistic family. That's why you have these tendencies. That's why like we're struggling with different things, but like you were brought up in this narcissistic family. Like, take a look at this. Like you're still trying to take care of problems that are not your own. You're still trying to fix things that are not your responsibility. But oftentimes people that are put in that role think that that's their job, think that that's their position, that they have to be able to do this to be able to keep family unity or to keep someone from getting abused in the family or to try to help someone process through something. But as a result, they end up getting hurt as well. Maybe you've seen some of these roles. If you have, list either the roles that you've seen or list the role that you are. Whether that's the, the golden child, the hero caretaker, the flying monkey, or the scapegoat, a lot of times people have been stuck in one of those categories for a period of time and they're not sure what to do to get out. They're not sure how to take back their power and grow and change and heal. We want to be able to provide that on this platform. We've got Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, like four different platforms that are main ones that we try to focus on dropping nuggets of truth, communicating on a day-to-day -day basis, whether that's on live events, whether that's through one-on-ones calls, through that's the NARC app, like every little thing that we're trying to do to be able to help provide awareness about narcissism. Because a lot of people don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people that watch these videos and like, yeah, I know about narcissism. And then there's a lot of people that watch it that don't. And a lot of people don't realize that. There's so many people I talk to on like one-on-ones that are like, I just heard about narcissism. I just realized that it was even a thing. Like I never even heard the word growing up. I never even heard the word in my family or in, in college or like whatever they've grown up in that they haven't even heard of it. Other times people have heard of it and they just put that in their mind and their thought of like a narcissist is someone who's just taking a lot of selfies and is just obsessed with himself. And there's so much more than that. A lot of times the people that have that perspective end up getting with a covert narcissist or a malignant narcissist or someone that slides underneath the surface that doesn't appear to be narcissistic because they don't have the grandiose idea of like, oh, I'm all that. They still think that, but it's buried down deep inside and it comes out in different ways. And the rage that they experienced with their toxic ex that was a grandiose narcissist, they don't see with the next person because the rage is passive aggressive, because it's slow and demeaning. It engages with other people. It doesn't attack directly. And a lot of people get confused about what narcissism is, what's actually out there. And you'll see countless people that come to the table, that come to one-on-ones, and they're trying to work through it. And they even know what it's called. They even know what it is, but they don't know what it looks like in real life. That's why we're on here. That's why we're trying to communicate and help people on a day-to-day -day basis. If you had not had a chance, check out the NARC app. It's been around for a couple months now. There's over 3,300 people that have logged into it because they can go on there and they can track their truth. If you're logged into the app already, I would encourage you to track your no contact. A lot of times people struggle with this concept and they struggle to go back to it. And the people that struggle to go back to it the most are typically the ones that end up breaking no contact. They're the ones that give up. They're the ones that don't have any accountability to someone or something to say, hey, I'm going to stay true to this. And then they go back to the narcissist and they realize it's 10 times harder to get back out. 
please be careful. Please continue to work on your growth, on your healing, on your change on a day-to-day basis. Got a unique opportunity coming up in the next week or so with a Wake Up Warrior Challenge that I'm going to be helping go through with multiple people. A way to be able to level up, take back your power, and to grow yourself incredibly. It's absolutely been transformational for my life. And I want to invite you to participate with it with me. You can go to my website, rawmotivations.com, click on Warrior. Go through, look at a couple of videos I have, go to the next page, get a discount code so you can actually get in, save some money, and join me on going through it with weekly Zooms, with daily shares, with different things that's going to happen in that group that's going to absolutely transform your life. 100% guarantee you that. If you go in being honest, vulnerable, and say I'm willing to put in the work, you will come out a completely different person. And if you apply it on a day-to-day basis, it will continue to transform you. It's what I use and work through every single day for myself, for the people I work with one-on-ones and coaching, and a lot of the development that people have seen stems from the stuff I've done with Wake Up Warrior. Check that out, rawmotivations.com slash warrior. Today I mentioned we're talking about the hero slash caretaker. Oftentimes this ends up being the oldest child. The family hero assumes the problem-solving, caretaking, and or high-achieving role. The hero responds to the family turbulence of trying to instill order and excelling in in certain areas such as academics or sports that bring pride to the family. Family heroes tend to be hyper-capable, doing well in school and perhaps taking on responsibilities that would normally be filled by a parent such as cleaning, cooking, and caring for siblings or earning money. A lot of times you'll see the hero caretaker step up when they have to, especially in single parent homes where they have to take over a certain role, where they have to take over a certain role where there's nobody else there to do it. And so they end up taking that over and being that way for the siblings, being that way for the narcissistic parent to try to make ends meet, whether that's monetarily or whether that's abuse wise so that other people don't get abused in the relationship. They're like, no, like I'm going to clean, I'm going to cook, I'm going to do this so that other people don't get yelled at. Oftentimes, the hero caretaker is the one that's trying to smooth over conversations, is trying to fix things. They may build their identity around saving their family or defending a scapegoated parent or sibling from overt abuse. Heroes who confront the family dysfunction may be perceived as a threat and become targeted as scapegoats. Family heroes also may be cast aside if they fail to fulfill the family expectations or if a different child or parent's new romantic partner steps into the role. When a hero child is replaced by a new adult when the narcissist when the parent remarries, that child may feel intense betrayal and abandonment. Oftentimes the heroes are there to try to be able to fix things, and oftentimes they start trying to fix things that are not really their responsibility. Whether that's taking a role higher in the family, whether as a step-in parent because that parent is not there, or because the parents are there, but they're just not doing that. A lot of times you see this brought up in households where the parents are involved in drugs or alcohol abuse and things like that that are happening in the household where there has to be a child that steps up and actually helps parent the kids. Or that helps parent as far as like living quarters and how they eat, how they dress, what they do. And oftentimes they're just helping people survive. Heroes typically experience ambivalence about their role, feeling needed and special, but also burdened and trapped. They may feel confused about their own agency, feeling at once powerful in their capabilities, but also helpless to ultimately change their underlying family dysfunction and get their needs met. As adults, they are often drawn further into further caretaking or justice seeking roles and struggle with control issues and feelings of perfectionism and over responsibility do you struggle with any of those perfectionism or over responsibility because you came through that household because you came through that abusive relationship because it's something that draws you towards like hey i need to act like this i need to be like this because it will help It'll save the family. It'll save someone from getting hurt. And you start to take on responsibilities and roles that aren't yours to take. They typically carry the unconscious belief that they can only receive love by earning it. Finding a balance between giving and receiving in their relationships and work lives is often the biggest challenge for hero children. 
As with other family members, self-awareness and re-examination family dynamics is important for personal growth and healing. Shedding the compulsive desire to rescue or fix other people and learning to accept support is the path of well-being and healthier relationships. Oftentimes you'll have this person that will get out of a narcissistic family and they will end up getting with another narcissist because they're so used to the mental mindset of I need to fix it, I need to save it. And as a result, these people turn into fixers and they end up getting with other narcissists. They end up getting with people with narcissistic personality disorder because they're like, hey, I need to fix it. This is the mentality that I came up with, this is the family that I came up with, and you might get involved in the relationship for the sole purpose of I can fix this. The thing you have to remember on a day-to-day basis is you can't fix your family and you can't fix another narcissist. You can't fix another person. You can only fix, grow, and develop you. The question is, are you willing? Not are you wanting, but are you willing to make that choice and actually make that choice to invest in you on a day-to-day basis to grow, take back your power, heal, and change?